Have you ever wondered how this beautiful 707 evolved into this monstrosity? Or how did the seemingly harmless 747 become one of the safest and most versatile aircraft in existence? The military variants of commercial planes often look strikingly different from their civilian counterparts, featuring additional antennas, windows, and sometimes even unconventional aerodynamic solutions that may not be immediately apparent to the untrained eye. Today we'll dive into the world of military aviation innovations, exploring why these modifications exist and why some of of them appear so peculiar. Welcome to Flight and Fine and let's take an in-depth journey into the world of air forces and their unique aircraft. The relationship between commercial and military aviation has been close since the beginning. While the majority of the aviation sector has always been dominated by commercial interests, a significant portion has been dedicated to defense and military applications. From the outset, military planes required specific characteristics that set them apart from the commercial variants, primarily focusing on enhanced maneuverability, increased capacity, and specialized capabilities. Of course, when we think of military aircraft, fighter jets often come to mind first. These strictly-looking defenders of the skies play a crucial role in air superiority and national defense. However, the military aviation ecosystem extends far beyond these supersonic interceptors. Larger planes, often adapted from commercial models, serve vital supporting roles that are equally important in maintaining a powerful air force. Recognizing the potential for adapting civilian aircraft to military needs, major plane manufacturers like Boeing and Airbus began producing military versions of their commercial airliners. Boeing made the B-3 Sentry, the E-6 Mercury, the C-137 Stratoliner, the ELM-2075 Falcon, it's not truly really made by Boeing, and the Boeing 717. Yes, Boeing models C-135 Stratolifter and KC-135 Stratotanker existed way before the actual Boeing 717 was introduced in 1998. While Boeing made a lot of military airplanes, Airbus developed only four, two A310 tankers and two A330 tankers. Military adaptations serve a variety of purposes from aerial refueling and radar surveillance to the transportation of high-ranking officials and command post operations. Each military plane is equipped with specialized systems, resulting in a diverse fleet of aircraft that often bear little resemblance to their civilian counterparts. Next, as the aviation developed, the new military planes, which were based on commercial variants, appeared. Boeing made the C-22 out of the 727, it made the T-43, a C-40 and the P-8 Poseidon out of the Boeing 737-200, 737-700 and 737-900ER, respectively. The air tanker KC-46 Pegasus was built based on the 767. Finally, the Air Force One, Boeing VC-25, was derived from the 747-400 to transport high-ranking US officials. Airbus's modifications are not that diverse. Airbus produced two A310 and two A330 tanker variants. Unlike Boeing, the plane makers started building military variants based on the second plane of its product line. Both Boeing and Airbus produce planes designed specifically for the Air Force, but today we will focus on the military variants of commercial planes. Every military variant has its own design peculiarities, but each of them wears a grey livery. With this trick, the planes are able to blend in with their surroundings, while the Air Force liveries have very little text on them to blend in even better. But the more important the aircraft, the more intricate defense systems it has installed. For example, the military tankers don't usually have many missile detection systems, while the plane command posts and Air Force One are always armed to their teeth. To make the comparison more interesting, let's take the air command post, the Boeing P-8 Poseidon. As the whole P-8 line is based on the 737-900ER, these planes are very similar in most regards. To address all the differences, we'll go from the tail up to the nose. The P-8 Poseidon has the satellite communication up its tail, the magnetic anomaly detector and the missile warning system, which alongside with the directed laser countermeasures makes up the ANAAQ-24V missile defense system. Next, it has a free-fall chute located near the locket launchers and enhanced radio antennas. 
Right behind the wings it has electronic support measures, scanner, an onboard gas generator and some more missile protection systems. The P-8 Poseidon also differs from the 737-900ER by its wings. They are fitted with deicable raked wingtips instead of the blended winglets that are usually installed on the commercial variant. Wings carry two air-to-air -air missiles with the ability to fit more of them. The P-8's engines are home to then two integrated drive generators, which are capable of providing the whole aircraft with electricity when the regular generators are inoperative. The forward fuselage part has auxiliary fuel tanks, which are capable of carrying over 31 tons of fuel. There is a retractable turret, the only window in the plane, and the radar, which is located inside the nose cone. There is a missile warning system and two more missile protection systems. That's a lot of equipment, which makes this plane a flying fortress. Military airplanes assist in various operations. For example, sometimes fighter jets need a large radar, which when installed makes the carrying plane look very unusual. One such aircraft radar is the ELM-2075 Falcon, which is based on the Boeing 707. It was first tested in 1994 by the Israel Air Force, while unlike other surveillance aircraft, this plane has its radar placed inside its nose, making it look very goofy. Later on, the Israel airspace industry switched to a more common pancake-like radar which could be seen almost on every intelligence-gathering airplane. Such surveillance planes get all of the airspace information within a range of 250 nautical miles, so that's why they have such big radars. Besides the fact that this Falcon radar can also be installed on 767s and 747s, it is currently used only on the Boeing 707. And while there are several types of surveillance planes that aren't based on the first Boeing jet, most countries still use this time-tested airliner. It is intriguing that the army doesn't care much about fuel efficiency since, as I understood, all the expenses are covered by the state. On the other hand, it is vital for the plane to be super reliable and always ready to fly. To maximize the reliability, the 66-year-old JT-8D engines can be replaced by the newer CFM-56 if needed. This switch makes the plane super powerful and much more modern. The military planes are beautiful and functional in their own way, however, I wish for pilots to use them only during training. I, as a commercial aviation fan, don't know much about the Air Force, so some parts of the video may be a bit inaccurate. You can address my mistakes in the comment section down below. Anyway, it was cool to make a difference and research a new topic, so if you like this video, you can watch another one, but this time about the commercial aviation. There I will show you how to find an airplane's whole operating history using only a few digits. Go see it and have a safe and well-observed flight.